Alkanes, by definition, lack functional groups. They only have CC and CH bonds. So we're going to look at a method for functionalizing these alkanes into alkyl halides by a process called radical halogenation. So we're going to use molecular chlorine and bromine um, in the presence of UV light. So we're going to use the, the um, symbols H nu, Planck's constant, times the frequency of a photon, the energy of a photon, um, as our reagents to do this reaction. And we're going to have two va uh, variations. We're going to see chlorination is going to prefer substitution of tertiary carbons to secondary to primary at a rate uh, probability of 5 to 3.8 to 1. So this is approximation. You'll see variations throughout textbooks there, but in general about 5 to 3.8 to 1. Uh, because this uh, difference is not enormous, it's rare that you're going to see chlorination yield uh, a true major product, but here's one scenario where you will see that. And so let's look at it. Uh, we've got here isobutane, and it's got three equivalent CH3s for a total of nine ways um, to make this particular product. So nine hydrogens that are primary and are of the same type. And so that's going to give us nine times one relative odds versus this tertiary position which has five times the odds but only one tertiary hydrogen. So, um, so one tertiary hydrogen here, five times the odds, gives us uh, five times one. And overall that means that nine out of 14 times a hundred gives us the percent of this major product. And so if we do that 9 divided by 14 times 100 gives us 64.3%. So we'll just say 64% of the primary substituted halide versus the minor product here, which would then um, be 5 out of 14 times 100 to put the chlorine in the tertiary position. Uh, the remainder left over there is 36%. Okay, so this minor product that will be formed. So it's still significant, but we do get a true major product here of the less substituted um, carbon with our halogens. So we can set up for further reactions at that position. If we want to be more selective to the tertiary position, uh, bromination, on the other hand, is going to prefer uh, secondary or tertiary to secondary to primary at a rate of 1,600 to about 82 to 1 odds. Um, of the more substituted position. So 1600 tertiary uh, to 1, 82 to 1 secondary, 1 to 1 primary position of substitution. So bromination should always be used um, when selecting for that, mo that more substituted position in our final product. It's going to be the most useful to synthesis in most scenarios. Okay, So we can look at this reaction, do the exact calculation again We've got three hydrogens of type one, one hydrogen of, or, or excuse me, nine hydrogens of type A, which are primary, and there are uh, one hydrogen left over of type B overall. The more substituted position, there's one of them, it's tertiary, so that is 1600 uh, to one odds, and then nine of those hydrogens times one to one odds means that overall this major product is going to have 1600 odds uh, but the total is going to be 1609. So part over the whole times 100 gives us the percentage 1600 divided by 1609 gives us an enormous 99.4. We'll just round off the 99% um, of that tertiary substituted position. So again, we're playing um, simple probability. 1600 to 1 for the tertiary positions, highly selective, very high yielding major product for bromination, typically the most useful in synthesis. Okay. 
All right, so here's an example of when chlorination really does give us a bit of a mess um, for a compound like 2-methylbutane because we have two primary hydrogens of one type. We have um, one, um, excuse me, two, uh, six total protons that would substitute chlorine for one of those hydrogens, so two CH3s substitute any one, it gives us this product. So six ways to get the first product that we have here. Um, those are primary. Again, so this is a primary substituted position. Well, you're also going to get another product where a primary sub, um, substitution occurs um, on the methyl we've just labeled B. So this product is different, still to a primary position, but it looks like this. Well, we can keep going because we also have a CH2, I'll label C there. There are two of them, and so two of those that are secondary would give us a product that looks like this. Notice a chiral center is formed, and so both R and S will be equally distributed. We're not stereoselective um, in our reaction. Same thing here, that chiral center formed and so we have um, both R and S will both be present, okay, because any one of those six can substitute. Same here, any one of these two can substitute. And then finally, we've got a third that I'll label um, D here that's a single tertiary position, so one that we'll label here. These are secondary, and then finally the product would look like this, for chlorination. Okay, so overall, what are our odds? Well, for primaries, it's going to be 6 times 1 over the total. We'll come back and add that total here in a moment. Here we've got three hydrogens of type B. They're also primary, so three um, hydrogens times 1 to 1 odds. Then two hydrogens times 3.8 to 1 odds for the secondary. And then finally, one hydrogen times five to one odds for the tertiary. So overall, our total is going to be six plus three is nine, plus 3.8 times two, plus five overall. So 21.6 is our total um, probability count here. So 6 out of 21.6 times 100, all these will be times 100, but they're all part over the whole, gives us the percentage when we multiply by 100 at the end. And so for the first product, if proton A's, the six of those are replaced, 6 divided by 21.6 gives us 28% if we round off, 3 divided by 21.6, gives us 14% if we round off, um, 7.6 divided by 21.6 gives us 35% odds, and then finally 5 divided by 21.6 gives us 23% odds of the tertiary substitution. So we get a huge mixture of products here. Um, with our major product eventually being this compound, the 2-chloro, the 3-methylbutane. Um, but again, R and S are both formed. It's not selective. We don't have a true greater than 50% high-yielding product. We'd prefer to be in the 90s anytime we have a percent yield. Um, so not the best reaction to use in synthesis. There are better ways. So we just get a huge scrambling of products here. Four constitutional isomers, two of those constitutional isomers have two stereoisomers as well, R and S, um, for those. Okay, all right, so discussing the mechanism of this reaction, all radical reactions have three steps, initiation, propagation, and termination. Let's look at an initiation step. If we are doing bromination or chlorination, we're going to take zero radicals into two, and we're going to do that by homolytically cleaving this bond. 
So one electron goes one way, one electron goes the other. These are half arrows. We end up with two bromine radicals from zero. This initiation step is initiated again by the photon of UV light that corresponds to the vibrational frequency of that bromine uh, bond there. All right, propagation then is going to take one radical to another. And so if we take our bromine radical that we just generated, we can show a propagation step for our last reaction. We could take that tertiary position, highlight a hydrogen there, and we are going to um, bring a bond together between H and BR and leave a radical left over in the tertiary position of that alkyl group. And so we end up with a byproduct HBR but overall we've propagated our radical from one position to another, from the bromine to the carbon. And then finally, termination. We're going to go from two radicals back to zero, and so to complete our mechanism of halogenation, we would bring bromine and this carbon together, two half arrows meet in the middle to make one bond, and we terminate forming our alkyl halide product and our mechanism is complete. And again, for all of these, multiple propagation and termination steps may be occurring, as your reading will tell you, but um, we need only show the steps that lead to our product. Okay, so those are going to be the only ones that are important for, for a mechanism showing the formation of a particular product, even though multiple steps can be occurring at any given time. Radicals are very unstable. They react with, with just about anything they come into contact with. It's just a matter of what happens faster. Forming the more stable product occurs faster, the more probable radical, and then the, the final uh, most abundant product from that.